Hey everybody, I'm Tim Rickman, and today I'm celebrating having my videos on YouTube for three years. And I've been wearing pants the whole time. Okay, well, technically these are shorts today, but you get the idea. I've got a lot of cool stuff I want to show you in this vlog. I want to talk about where Rickman Origami is now and where I see it going in the future. You may be wondering what this is on my head. This is, of course, my Origami Crane Party Hat. The first tutorial that I uploaded to YouTube in April of 2013. I made one for you too. Here you go. Oh, wow. You look great. If you're interested in making one of these for yourself for real, I used about a 30 and 1 fourth inch or 77 centimeter square of postal wrapping paper to make this. Uh, if you have a smaller head or you're making one for a child, you want to make it an inch or two shorter than that. And now I'm going to show you a clip of me putting this together. So if you guys are interested in folding that, I'll put a link to the original video tutorial down in the video description below. So as you guys know, I took a pretty long break from posting video tutorials there for a while, almost a year. Uh, back in October, I did post a tutorial for Smaug 2.1, which has been doing really well, <laughs> I'm really happy about. Uh, some of you guys have even showed me pictures of your folding of that model, which to a designer, it just makes my day when I see other people have taken the time to fold my models. So that's really exciting. Before that, I took almost a year before I posted another video tutorial. And by the time I eventually posted the tutorial for Smaug, some of you guys posted comments that you thought I might have been dead. <laughs> But the opposite is true. My wife and I had a baby, and I wanted to spend a lot of time with my family and enjoying that time because it goes by so fast. So uh, I kind of took a little break for family time. So the video camera I usually use to take videos of my tutorials with, uh, we've been using that to take pictures and videos of the baby. And the camera that I'm using right now, it isn't really equipped to take uh, footage of multi-hour long video tutorials. Uh, the resolution isn't as good, things like that. Uh, but I am going to get that camera back soon, and I plan on restarting my video tutorials of my models. And in a little bit, I want to show you guys some of the projects that I've been working on and tutorials that you guys can look forward to seeing soon. The first model I want to show you guys is Ridley. Now this is the new version. It's a little different than the version I designed for Tadashi Mori's design challenge. He now has teeth and glowing eyes and I consider this to be the final version of, of my Ridley model. It's taken me years to put this together. This was actually the first idea that I had back when I started designing origami like four years ago. You know, I, I grew up playing Metroid and Super Metroid, and Ridley has always been just like this really fascinating character to me. So it's been a, a really long journey to, to put this model together. And what I'd like to do now is show you guys some clips of the progress of me designing Ridley. All right, let's take a look at that now.
So Ridley will probably be the next video tutorial that you guys see from my channel. Uh, what I ended up doing was setting the paper in diamond position and putting the folds for the teeth up in that top corner. And I actually borrowed that set of folds from my favorite origami designer, Shuki Kato, and his Gigantosaurus model. And just so you guys know, there's nothing wrong with borrowing uh, some folds from another person's model uh, if you're just taking like a small section of that model and using it in your own. You know, you don't want to completely copy someone else, but there's no sin against borrowing uh, how someone folded a, a small feature of their model and using it in your own. And I brought this up to Shuki and I asked him if he was the original creator of how to make those tiny spikes in a row. And he said that he got the idea from Robert Lang's centipede model, which I thought was pretty cool. And it turns out that Robert Lang was the original designer of how to set up those tiny spikes in a row. And uh, when he was making his centipede model, he used Tree Maker to uh, you know, help him solve that problem and uh, Tree Maker gave him kind of an irregular pattern, but as he was analyzing it, there was this small section that was very regular and it looked nice and neat, so he took that section and repeated it and made his own pattern for what we now have as uh, Robert Lang's awesome centipede model. And there is a video tutorial for that model. I'll put the link to, in the video description down below. I am ridiculously proud of the way that this model turned out for being my original idea and finally being able to hold this in my hands and say that it's a finished model it's just uh, it makes me very proud you know there's a little bit of origami history in this model a little bit of the old a little bit of the new and it just makes me so happy to finally have this done uh, so I'm going to be very proud to be able to present you guys with a full length tutorial for this model uh, soon. I don't know when that's going to be, but that'll probably be the next thing you see from my channel as far as video tutorials go. And now, if you'll indulge me in going down another rabbit hole, sometimes you guys ask me why I don't use programs like Tree Maker, Reference Finder, things like that. I'm a very kinesthetic person. Uh, I learn by doing, and oftentimes when I'm trying to solve a problem with origami, when I'm trying to make a particular feature, I have to manipulate the paper myself and, and physically see how that happens. These programs are great and if you are able to use them, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's great. You should definitely do that. Uh, maybe I'm a bit of an idiot. I get on these programs and I can't really make them work for me, um, but you definitely should if that's what's working for you. All right, let's move on to the next model. So you guys have seen this. This is my new version of Caduce. Um, I changed it a little bit. I got rid of these posts in the back and made the snake tails longer so that you're able to get the spaces going down and it looks a little fuller and more cool. So I'm gonna do a video tutorial on that sometime soon as well. Uh, I'm not sure what order that's gonna go in, maybe third or fourth, I'm not sure. And. Um, then, of course, there's the model that's been sitting on my shelf for <laughs> almost a year now, maybe more, a uh, year and a half really, Jabberwocky. I am going to do a video tutorial for this model. It's really complicated, uh, probably just as complicated as Smaug or Ridley, um, but I really want to show this to you guys in a full-length tutorial. Uh, I don't have this shaped right now, but you kind of get the general idea. There's pictures of it on my, my Facebook page. So Jabberwocky is coming soon as well. It's one of the only models that I made in that time period when I was making models for Tadashi Mori's design challenges that, that didn't get an updated version because this is a, a finished model to me. There's nothing more that I can do to this model to make it better. The only thing that I did do was I changed the way that I make the pleats collapse in the back there. And um, it's a really minor change. It's nothing that I would call for, uh, uh, you know, calling it a, a new version of the model, but it's just a way to kind of cinch up the pleats in the back and make the model uh, collapse a bit more evenly. So of course we already have Smaug 2.1 that I've already made a video tutorial for. There was one other model that I made during that time period right after I made all of these first versions of these models 
that is a Tauntaun from Star Wars that a Lego figure can actually ride in. And I don't have a folded version of that model, so I want to show you a clip of that model right now. So that's another model that you might see from me in the near future. Um, I've also recently made an updated version of my anchor model. And I've also been working on this. It's a five-headed Hydra. The paper that I used for this example was uh, really small, so it doesn't really highlight the model too well, but you can see what's going on here. It's folded from one square of paper, and uh, I'm really kind of happy with the way this is turning out. So uh, you might see that video tutorial from me soon. Um, I had some people ask me to show them uh, uh, pattern grafting in origami in my uh, how to box pleat series so these are just some examples of a turtle shell that uh, you'll probably see in that series soon uh, I am still going to be doing videos in that series as well and this is the start of a version of Shenron that I've been working on you can see here's this dragon whiskers here um, and I'm using something called uh, approximations <laughs> which is uh, a method that I've been using to make 22.5 degree angles sync up more closely with a normal box grid uh, I'll be explaining that in my how to design box pleating series sometime in the near future as well um, I've been working on uh, some kind of unique models here this is another part of a monster model that I'm working on he's got jaws that kind of clamp down like that Rawr! so that's fun I don't know where that's going but I'm liking what I see so far there and I have been working on a mega Charizard X you can see there's his wings there's one of his feet here and um, his head it's going to be a color change model uh, the flames coming out of the side of his mouth there eyes and head I have no idea when that one's going to get finished, but that is another model that I've been working on. And then there's a couple other odd ends. Uh, <laughs> it's a little hard to tell here, but I was working on a Randler, which is the icon of uh, the uh, uh, the series uh, Good Mythical Morning. Uh, maybe I'll finish up this model sometime. This looks really bad, but that's what that is supposed to be right there. You might see that from my channel soon. And I've always wanted to do one of the robots from Castle in the Sky. You know, the gardener robot that they see up there. And this is a little gadget that I was working on for uh, one of their, their arms. So that gives you guys a little bit of an idea of what to expect from my channel soon. Uh, some of these I probably won't end up doing video tutorials for, but definitely the ones that I have finished models of, those are coming next. So look forward to that. Hey, if you guys liked watching this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. What I'd like to do now is I got a couple of requests for, from you guys to show you uh, the MC pasting process and I filmed a little bit of that when I was making my Ridley model So I'm going to close out the video by showing you guys that thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video All right, bye. This is the paste I'm using. Uh, I found it at a hardware store here in Japan um, I put just a small amount of water in this cup and I have about two spoonfuls of this paste in there so far and I'm looking for a runny consistency and this is almost there. The paste is about ready. It's got a, a runny consistency as you can see and when you stir it it gives just a little bit of resistance to the spoon. Today I'm going to be MC pasting my new version of Ridley with uh, teeth and color change eyes. One of the most nerve-wracking things about MC shaping is all the time that goes into prepping the model before you get to the point uh, where you can shape him after you've got the model collapsed. As you can see I've added quite a few more of these twist ties to get him in the shape that I want him kind of looking down a little bit pitched forward. Uh, you know, shaping is very key to the personality of this model so you really want to spend a lot of time making that look good. Kind of want him to balance on two legs, but maybe that's asking too much for this model. We'll see where that goes.
I think I finally got this set up. He's kind of leaning forward like that. And there's a little bit of space underneath his tail, just enough to make it look cool. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom up because as I add paste, the model is going to get heavier and I want to form the foundation first. So I'm going to do the legs and then move on to stuff that's along the center line of balance. And then I'll probably do the tail since this side of the model is a little lighter than the front. And then I'll start working on the head and the arms. So I was messing around with him and Ridley started giving me all kinds of problems all of a sudden for whatever reason, I don't know, but I finally got him set up again the way he's supposed to be. I got the tail up a little higher, which I think is a really cool look. It's very symmetrical here. I'll fix that wing a little later, but uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good and uh, using stuff like this household things that you find around the house can help to keep the model propped up as it's drying. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the legs here. Anywhere where there's a lot of pleats on top of each other like this, you want to put a good amount on to let that uh, soak down into there so that those pleats can dry together and add a lot of stability to your model. And everything else you can just put a coat on to give the paper a little more stiffness. As you guys can see, I've added a lot of paste to the legs and gone into the tail a little bit. I've set him up on this tin because it's going to be a lot easier to release the paste uh, from the surface he's sitting on if it's on something that's really smooth. Uh, once I started adding the paste he started giving me a little bit of problems again. Uh, he still is having a little bit of balance issues but when the paste dries that should go away again. I think it's just because the paper is soggy. Uh, but once it dries, it'll get its stiffness again, and hopefully that problem will go away again. But uh, I've been recording, well, I've only been recording a few minutes, but um, I started filming about two hours ago. So you can see how tedious this process can be. I'm going to let them dry for maybe another hour or two, maybe more, until that really starts to get thick. I put a lot of paste on there, so it's going to take a bit for it to dry but I want to make sure that's dry before I move on to anything else this here some of this foil underneath this tail to keep them from falling back okay I've had this drying for about five hours now I'm going to take away the foil and Oh, the paper towel tube, and he's standing up. That's a good sign. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Carefully unstick. That one's free. Okay, so it's just this one now. Okay. I think he's free. Yep, yep. All right. Wow. All right. He stands up. Wow. That's good. That's such a good thing that he stands up. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I still have to do the rest of the model. But his legs are dry now, and he's looking pretty cool. I'm happy. 
I'm happy with the way this is turning out. This is definitely the show side. I like the spacing here. I'm going to quit talking about this and get to the rest of the shaping. Wow, this is turning out good. <laughs> I'm happy. I was worried about this, but it's looking good. I think I figured out what part of the problem was. I readjusted the twist ties down here by his ankles. I think that's where the instability was coming from. And I'm going to start attacking the wings here as well. We'll make sure to get a good amount here where all the layers are coming together in the post of the wing. But uh, along the surface of the wing, I, don't, I just want to put a really thin layer on there uh, just to stiffen the paper. So on any surface like this where it's just one layer of paper, just put a very small amount on. Both wings MC pasted right now. And the ankles are re repasting there uh, after I've brought them together. So hopefully that'll help. See he's already standing up a little better like that. Right now I've got a lot on the tail here and I'm going for sort of this space uh, along the point of balance so anything from here down the wings dried up pretty nicely. Uh, I just want to get some more on here so this piece can get finished. a lot of creases here in this space so I want to put on a lot so that has a chance to get down into those pleats. And I'm going to be able to let this dry overnight so I can put it on kind of thick because it'll have a, a good chance to dry. So I let the model dry overnight and I'm pleased to say that he's standing on his own now. All of the legs, the wings, this part of his back here, and the tail. Uh, I've applied MC2, <clears throat> so he has a lot of stability now. And I'm going to add MC to his arms. And I'm going to add the MC to the head last. I think I'll... Uh, I'll spend a lot of time on that part in particular just because there's some areas that still need a little bit of fine tuning uh, with the shaping but you can see he's got a lot of stability there so that's good that's great all right the pleats and the arms need a lot of MC so I'm just gonna put this on generously so it can Go down into those pleats. There's a little part of his arm here that uh, is kind of like pushed in. So now that the MC has kind of softened that up, I'm going to come in from, it's hard to see, but in here, I'm going to come in and push from the outside to run that out a bit more. Yeah, that should look better. So now that shape there is a lot better. I've gone in and done his arms and a little bit more of the neck here. And uh, if you can see his thumbs, when they got wet, they wanted to expand like that. Later when the MC starts to get a little tacky, I'll be able to push that back into place and let it dry. Uh, but it's a little too thin of a feature to wrap the uh, 
floral wire around so I'll just attack that in uh, an hour or two. So this has been drying for a while and you can see this thumb has kind of come up a bit so I'm just going to reach in here. The MC is now partially dried and I've got that pointed in the right direction now kind of like this sort of grip and I'm going to do the same thing to this thumb on this side just kind of shape it a little bit more ah, there like that now it'll dry hopefully in that direction it's been about a day since the last segment I filmed. Everything is done except for the head. And I've positioned it a little better. Uh, the back of the head angles down just a little bit and uh, kind of shape the eyes where I want them to be. Hopefully they'll stay there. I think the head I'll need to go back and do a little bit of secondary shaping after it's dried. But maybe it'll turn out great the first time. So here we go, the final part of the model. I'm just going to start adding the paste on anywhere where <clears throat> it's a nice smooth area of the paper. I'm just going to put a light coat on. And anywhere where there are a lot of layers, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, add in a lot. Now I'm still using the same mix of MC paste that I started out with. Uh, you just want to make sure to mix it up, stir it up really good each time you come back to use it because it'll it'll kind of settle. Wow. Alright, I'm going to do this off camera because I'm sure you can tell it's very tedious work. So I'll come back in a minute when this is has the MC applied to it. I'm pretty pleased with the amount I have on there. Everything stayed pretty much where it was supposed to be. I'll come in later and get the teeth uh, a little bit better, but for now I just want the basic shape of the skull to solidify like that. And I think this is turning out pretty good. I can't wait to see what it looks like when he's a little bit more dried. And I can start taking some of these twist ties off. So I'm going to let that dry for a few hours. Alright, well here we are. <coughs> The model's had a few hours, it's actually been a couple of days, uh, but it's had plenty of time to dry. There's just a few spots around the teeth that I want to do a little bit later, but right now I'm going to start to take off all of the twist ties and see what this model looks like standing on its own. Look at that. 